Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. I have something very special for you guys today. Let's waste no time and introduce the RTX 3080. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this really awesome cooler design. So remember to subscribe. I'm gonna have other videos coming on the RTX 3080 and let's waste no time and let's get right into it. Thank you for joining me once again. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something very special and that's gonna be the RTX 3080. And more specifically, we're gonna be talking about the Founders Edition and the cooling design. Now, this GPU has gotten now, the RTX 3080, especially the Founders Edition, has gotten a hilarious amount of demand recently. People are really ecstatic, not only for the performance for the dollar that you're able to get out of a GPU like this, but the cooler for the Founders Edition is one of the most interesting and innovative designs that I've seen on any GPU. So today, let's talk about a few big reasons why this cooler is so unique and why people are going absolutely crazy about getting their hands on one. So the first point that we're gonna talk about with this actual cooler design, and let's get right to the basics. The build quality is really exceptionally good. This is one heavy feeling GPU. It's probably one of the heaviest ones that I felt. As I touch it, it feels very, very substantial. Very impressed with the build quality. In my opinion, if you're gonna drop big bucks for a GPU like this, it better feel high quality because it's something that people can tend to keep for many years. And it's not only an indication of sort of the exclusivity and the price that you pay for it it's also a big indicator of how long something's going to last in terms of long-term reliability i think the build quality really tells you a lot about a product generally you can expect for the rest of the build and the internals to be just as good so i've actually made this argument that the founders edition generally has some of the best build quality out there um, in fact a little while back i did a video on the 2070 super and i mentioned that the build quality is also really exceptional and i've even thought this about the previous generation 10 series for example the 1080 ti the way the gpu was built just felt very substantial now it's not to say that the third party gpus aren't built well a lot of them definitely have very high build quality as well but even when i hold something like this rtx 3080 founders edition and if you hold some of the really big three fan designs like maybe a 2080 ti from the previous generation the designs and build quality are often good as well it's definitely a lot more plastic and it doesn't feel anywhere near as solid as something like this founders edition does and let's get to our second point after the actual build quality the aesthetics of the GPU. I know aesthetics can be a lot more subjective. Some people may look at this GPU and think that it's maybe not too attractive. Personally, I think it's a very edgy, innovative design. I really like the way that it looks. In fact, I can think of so many ideas of different builds that you can do with a GPU like this. It has a very monochromatic vibe. Um, in fact, a lot of motherboards have the same sort of color scheme. You can do some really awesome builds with a GPU like this. So aesthetically, I think, first of all, it's super unique. We haven't seen a GPU that looks like this in a very long time. Generally, the Founders Edition of the past, such as the 10 series and prior, they had that blower style design for a while. And while those GPUs don't look necessarily that bad, the 20 series was definitely a significant change in design for these Founders Edition GPUs. For the first time, they had that dual fan system, which definitely provided a lot better thermal performance as compared to the previous blower styles. And now we reach the third point of this cooler. It's not a blower style cooler like we saw with the 1080 Ti. It's not a traditional two fan setup as we saw with the 2080 or the 2080 Ti. It still has two fans. You got one here, then you flip it around and you have the other one there. But have you guys ever seen a GPU with a fan on this side and a fan on that side? Having this very innovative fan design definitely creates a very efficient cooler on these GPUs. It's considerably quieter than the previous generation. And you have to remember, I'm sure you guys have seen all the videos about power supplies on the 3080. The 3080 is gonna be considerably more demanding on power as opposed to the previous generation like the 2080 Ti. So having said that, the more power you have, you're gonna have more heat. So you need a very 
very efficient cooler such as this one in order to dissipate that heat more effectively and then really the key here is when you want something that's next generation that's going to perform well you don't want something that's going to be really loud really hot you want something that's going to have a considerable amount of efficiency but at the same time, also having better thermals, quieter performance. Nobody likes to hear their computer sound like a vacuum and feel like a space heater. So something like this, definitely very, very efficient. So this cooler design not only elevates the Founders Edition to something that's really aesthetically interesting, but something that actually performs really, really well and in a very innovative way that we haven't seen before. And then as we take apart some of this cooler, the first thing you'll see is the back plate. Now, if you guys have water cooled any GPU in the past, you'll be very familiar with this. Basically, this will go on the back. Um, it's definitely a different shape than it's been previously. And now this is the cooler bare by itself, just a cooler element without the actual GPU. If you can see through here, you can see these heat pipes that connect here. Look how interesting that triangular design is. And you see those in there. It almost looks like these black heat pipes. They go from this fan all the way to the back. And then here, of course, you have your connections for the fan and also your LED lights. They do shine white. In fact, you can see it right here when it's on. So it's definitely very interesting taking a look at an internal GPU like this. I've water cooled a lot of GPUs and I've never seen something quite like this. So this is definitely a really, really interesting design. Even the size of the PCB here is different than the typical 2080 Ti or something like that. So definitely a very interesting design but also the engineering going on behind this to make this a very powerful but efficient cooler is actually really, really interesting. And I'm glad to see GPUs take such an innovative leap, especially with something like the Founders Edition. I think doing a cooler like this on something that's a Founders Edition makes a lot of sense because it's almost like Nvidia saying, here's the best we can do, the most innovative design. Because then when the third party and partner cards are released from different brands like Asus, EVGA, MSI, they can tackle cooling needs with their own innovations it's going to be different so at least you have almost like a halo product here saying all right this is the best that we can do with a cooler and then everybody else also tries their best which i think is really awesome from us as gamers and consumers because now we're getting some really highly engineered and top-notch computing components that's just not a bunch of plastic slapped on with minimal thought put into the actual engineering and aesthetics this is something that's extremely well designed and you can tell that just by holding it and taking a look at how some of the internal mechanics work. So now I'm going to borrow one of my RGB lights here. I want to show you guys something really cool. So if you put the GPU right on there, look how awesome that is, how it passes through. Look how awesome it is, how it passes through the light. If light can get through, you know air is going to get through as well. So it has this really awesome like pass through design and you can even see it from this other side here. You can see that everything sort of passes through and everything has this very unique design and it's split up in these different quadrants. Now let me put this RGB light back or else it's going to be uneven. And now here is the GPU sort of with its older brother. This is the RTX 2080 Super. And as you can see, they couldn't be more different. The design itself is significantly different. I mean, the Super has that mirror in, in the middle. It has more of like a chrome look. Build quality, I would say it's still very exceptional. Um, they weigh very similarly. I still think this is a little bit heavier. Um, now the fan design is very different. As you can see, you have a fan here, fan on the other side. This one's gonna be more traditional, two fans. And if you take a close look at the fans, they also have their differences. This one seems to have a lot more blades. This one a little bit less. Um, otherwise they're similarly sized in terms of the actual gpu size they're actually pretty closely sized of course the 3090 is going to be significantly bigger than either of these but the rtx 3080 is not really significantly different size than the rtx 2080 then of course this has a more traditional backplate it's going to have more of that traditionally sized pcb which is considerably longer than the pcb in this gpu which actually with a much smaller pcb that's maybe around this size that's going to give you some really interesting options down the road as water cooling becomes more and more popular in mini itx system if the pcb of a gpu like this is a lot smaller so will the water block and so will the system that you can actually cram components into and of course, if you're going to water cool something like the RTX 3080, water cooling has its own sort of advantages with aesthetics. It looks really, really cool depending on what type of system you're building. And of course, with performance generally, even versus a cooler like this, you can get lower numbers. 
but honestly, I don't think as many people will water cool this particular Founders Edition GPU. I think more people may go for the reference PCB, um, which is not the same as the Founders Edition. So maybe something from a, a third party manufacturer like Asus or EVGA, MSI, etc. That it's definitely something that's almost like an iconic design that you can run in your system. So I can actually understand if people don't want to water cool this particular version. Not that they can't do it. You can. There are certain challenges with it. I just think the cooler is so unique it's something you probably want to keep in your system so the final point does having a cooler that's very innovative very efficient performs well for sort of the thermal load and performance that it's putting out does it mean that something like this makes the third party and partner cards sort of invalid no of course not it doesn't those gpus also have their own benefits aesthetics can be very subjective some people may enjoy the look of a certain third party card more than this and of course a lot of those coolers like the manufacturers have been working at those similar two and three fan designs for many many years so a lot of those coolers definitely are very efficient as well the main thing that i wanted to point out here is how innovative the founders edition cooler is compared of course to even the previous generation founders edition and the blower style that came before it it's definitely a step in the right direction because here we're combining much more efficient performance, better control of thermals, much better noise control as well. So that all makes for a very unique package. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to give you guys sort of a, a brief overview of this cooler, and I definitely plan to do more content also on the cooler. Maybe we'll get into some more details, more specifics, and of course, on the GPU itself. I want to do a really cool test, Intel versus AMD, PCIe Generation 3 versus 4, the Intel 10900K versus the AMD 3950X. So we're talking about the two big dog mainstream processors pitted up against each other with an RTX 3080. That's something that's going to be coming up on the channel. So if that's something you want to see, remember to subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below. I want to know what you guys think about this NVIDIA cooler, and I'll see you guys on the next video.